Good morning, everyone. Thank you to Steel Orbis for inviting me, especially Muratir al Mezen. I'm sorry uh, he's not here today, and I would have loved to meet him. And so, for me, it's a great pleasure and great responsibility to open up this conference, which is going to give us important contributions in terms of the market trends. As far as my side is concerned, I'm going to get into uh, today's topic, um, which is recycled steel, my topic, to give you some ideas and try to clarify its role within this juncture. The current juncture, as we know, is particularly demanding because we have a uh, Green Deal that was uh, launched in 2019 and started some uh, demanding plans in terms of decarbonization, uh, carbon net zero 2050. And the uh, objectives are ambitious and the timeline is quite strict. So these two elements, of course, have an important impact on all sectors, high carbon uh, intensity sectors such as the steel industry. Of course, uh, there's going to be a lot of resources to be used. One is a critical raw material act to try and uh, keep and access to critical uh, materials necessary for the industry over the next few years. The waste shipment regulation aiming at limiting exporting scraps toward third countries and CBAN, which is the uh, mechanism for uh, carbon. And we are going to talk about it this morning. So we can see it from different angles, however, timeline is very strict and so in order to reach our objectives we're going to have to be very very committed so with this outlook going towards a green transition of course recycled steel is the mm, matter with um, the material with less environmental Now, the advantages of recycled steel are three. First, environmental advantage. If you want to produce a ton of uh, steel from an integral of an emissions are 1.9 tons of carbon. And if we consider the uh, preparation, we get to 2.5. And the environmental impact of recycled um, steel is 0 0.35 with a net advantage in terms of uh, um, climate uh, of the climate situation the second advantage is less visible and more important because we are talking about an iron percentage which is 96 98 percent so recycled steel is absolutely the highest iron carrier available at the moment compared to alternative materials. And then the third advantage is that it's immediately available. So it is indeed something we can source straight away. So recycled steel shall have a crucial role in decarbonization process, the steel industry. And we are expecting oh. the um, um, electric oven to uh, be very uh, common in this uh, process. This has been said many times and possibly uh, this will provide great impulse to circularity, which is a particularly important topic because the European steel industry, um, or at least 53.5%, still uses high ovens. Uh, whereas 46.5 uh, is electric ovens. So in order to give you some uh, data, United States use electric ovens by 72%. And then this is going to be very important to go to a greener industry. Now, 
In this picture, Italy is an exception where the steel production, electric steel production is 84 percent, um, with the site of Taranto left out. So in fact, Italy is not only an exception, but an excellence on a European level and on a world level. This excellence comes from the fact that in Europe, recent studies have identified that only 12 percent of a European economy is circular and 88 percent is still under linear models of the last decades. So this certainly will provide great impulse. Now, Italy, because of its characteristic, is the first a recycled steel consumer within the EU with 19 million tons, of which 12.5 coming from uh, internal collection, about uh, uh, 5 million bought on the 500 million, uh, 105 million bought in the internal market, and the other coming from third countries. So over the next few years, because of moving the steel industry into electric, we hope that the demand for recycled steel will grow. And we hope so, in fact, because we are champions in terms of recycling in uh, Europe. Our recycling scrap stream has provided impulse to other recycling streams, and the recycling industry is ready to uh, support steel mills in the process of decarbonization. Now, the good news is that we have the material, and we have the material on the European territory. Every year, we collect about 100 million um, scrap tons, they are processed and recycled to be ready for the furnace in the steel mills. And so it is clear that uh, collection is particularly important. Now, in terms of these 100 million, only 80 percent is absorbed by European steel mills. Uh, which are using about 79 million and 20 percent uh, has no collocation and has therefore to find its way through exports. Now the first exporting countries in Europe are Holland, Belgium, Germany, Poland, Denmark, Romania, and I think three or four other countries. Now in this picture, one more time, Italy is an exception because with a collection of 12.5 million tons on the national territory, only about half a million goes to export. So the percentage is about 4%, the minimum percentage, and somehow it is uh, organic to the market and the structure of the market itself. So increasing um, recycled steel demand in uh, Europe would be a great push, would provide a great push and a great driver for energy transition because other than pushing circularity, it would also uh, make the whole supply chain more resilient. However, what types of scrap do we have? And what kind of scraps can we expect for the future? Now, currently, scraps are subdivided in three categories. Home scrap, which is internal production returns. New scrap coming from um, the manufacturing sector. And old scrap, which is collection of old scraps, which is obtained from the end of life cycle of steel products. Now, home scrap and new scrap, um, so internal and new, are the high-quality scraps and are immediately available. However, old scrap has different cycles depending on the uh, life cycle of the products that are then made available. Now, currently, home scrap 
Therefore, internal uh, recycling covers about 10, 15 percent of the needs, new scrap about 35 percent, and the rest is covered um, by old scrap. However, with the uh, technological advances of industrial plants, uh, which will produce steel and the machine that will produce steel, we will easily see an increased effectiveness in using materials, bringing about a reduction of scrap. So the forecast is that quality scrap will decrease, and in total counter trend, old scrap with about a 70 years life cycle on average, because the products are different, will grow. Uh, so from the current 45 million to 58 million tons in 2030. So this element is not a detail at all in a moment when the steel industry must uh, do its transition towards green steel, clean steel. So now there's another topic to discuss, which is the quality of scrap. Of course, the increase of old scrap facing the decrease of new scrap or internal scrap will uh, decrease the quality of the materials. Therefore, we will need to use uh, purification technologies to make these materials fit for use uh, within electric furnaces. Now, to date, uh, we already have a way to produce uh, quality steel. We have a fragmenting process, which envisages different steps with a magnetic selection, optical selection, infrared selection, and manual selection to get to a uh, quality product. However, these operations have a cost, so in order to implement all this, we need to uh, necessarily um, have the money to do this. So the topic of quality will remain central on DRI, which is currently produced uh, uh, in high uh, quality production with 67% iron, but we know that 67% of iron mineral will not be sufficient to cater for the demand, which will be exponentially grow on a global level. There are experiments undergoing to try and use a lower quality DRI within electric furnaces, however, without a technological advance allowing to use uh, less quality materials within electric furnaces, it is clear that the lack of raw material could uh, create limits and limit competitiveness. Now, on this topic, I think it's important to talk about something else which is connected to uh, scrap. The change in the steel industry towards electric furnaces will bring about the installation of new plants, new production plants, um, latest generation production plants. So the technologies of the new electric furnaces will hopefully allow to use lower quality materials. And this is already happening in Turkey and in the US. And this should increase and push demand for recycled steel much more than what is going on at the current state. However, there's a couple of doubts of buts here. Now, if we look at the decarbonization process, we know that the road will go towards electric furnaces uh, mm, fueled with DRI or green hydrogen, wherever this is possible, or natural gas. In Europe, we have about 17 uh, DRI production plants programmed or in installation setup phase. 
And the objective is to get by is to get sorry to 2030 with a DRI European production of about 33.5 million. This is quite an ambitious objective if we think that currently we are gathering and producing about 330,000 tons. So the growth is exponential. Now, if the road to DRI is paved, and there's no doubt about it, the um, main raw material will be DRI because it will allow to guarantee uh, quality to flat steel that uh, today is part of the main uh, push of the main market. And then scraps will possibly be used only in minimum percentages. And they will serve to a couple of things, covering charge gap and also recovering percentage point of iron that DRI doesn't have, because DRI is around 90%. We have DRIs that have been uh, recently transacted at 86%. So it is clear that the difference between the percentage uh, of uh, 96, 98 in recycled steel is huge. There is another point. The choice to decarbonize is not single-minded. Decarbonizing a furnace can also be a choice aimed at reducing emissions, therefore applying a partial decarbonization. This can happen through the increase of the use of PCIs or hydrogen, plastic, natural gas, biomass. However, it is clear that if this is a possible choice, using scrap could still be limited once again. And this is not a detail because JRC, which is the uh, research uh, center integrated to the European Commission, has carried out a study on scrap and on the evolution of scrap within the European Union envisaging that in 2040, collection of internal scrap will be 150 million. This data was also confirmed by Word Steel. And the fact that the scrap is actually in a phase where it will increase has been uh, confirmed and today figures are telling us about 480 million, 480 million tons. In 2050, a doubling of this figure is envisaged. So this is showing a world in continuous evolution from this point of view. Now, OECD confirming the exponential growth of this material also highlighted the fact that accessing material will not be equal in different countries, and there will be countries suffering scarcity of this material more than others. Now, in this framework, OECD and World Steel have identified Europe as the most sustainable area. So the area within which the um, collection scrap growth in the next few years will be substantial, will stabilize, will become stable. And uh, if we think about the fact that recycled scrap are the main driver for energy transition, this is envisaged to, uh, to, to, to be uh, the element that will bring steel production in Europe to complete circularity. And this is very important now. It is apparently obvious from the figures that uh, neither today nor in the near future there is no scarcity of scrap that may somehow justify uh, export restrictions. Scrap 
is and will be a strategic raw material, but it's not critical. And it's not because if 20% of what we collect must be placed outside because it's not used within the territory of the European Union, this is clearly indicative. It is fair to guess that we will reach full circularity of steel production in Europe. I think that all of us should aim at this, but this will only work if the production of steel in Europe is maintained or even better increases. We know that from 2008 to today, the production of steel has declined consistently. It reached the, the minimum uh, uh, in 2016 with 126 million tons, uh, with uh, a reduction of 10 million compared to the previous year, in which they recorded 136. So in a framework in which uh, higher availability of scrap uh, could not find a use uh, in the territory of the EU, it will be fundamental to keep the international channels open. Otherwise, we may run the opposite risk to interrupt the virtuous circle of circular economy to reduce or endanger the cycle that guarantees a thorough collection of material and reduce marginality in investments that we would expect to be made to allow for an upgrade of processes and technologies in the domain of recycling. So it's uh, obvious that we are living a crucial period of time. The climate change, climate change and climate challenges uh, uh, requires action today. And decarbonization faces with the major issues. We are all aware of that. It will require huge efforts and radical changes. We wish that the European Commission, I mean, the new European Commission, although following to the previous, following up to the previous choices, may decide to remodulate the time frame and the targets. But I believe that we are living in a really crucial period of time, a historical period, with the challenges we are faced with. That the solution or reply will hardly come from one of the players of the supply chain. I believe it will come from joint efforts and from a shared uh, desire to reach the targets. Each of us, due to the role that we fulfill and the responsibilities that we have, may decide to sit around the table, leave behind individual interests, and try to imagine a path and fulfill a process that will engage us all. We did it in the past, and we can do it again. At this time, the challenges that we are faced with and that are looming ahead will leave no winners or losers. Either we all win or we all lose. So I truly believe that today it's worth trying to define a common horizon altogether. Thank you very much.